Uh, I want to take you through expected responses on observations. Up on the paper three, you can write the observation which is correct, but you write it wrongly. So if you write your observation wrongly, it means you are not going to score. In qualitative analysis, the candidate carries out a series of tests, makes observations, and then makes the possible inferences. The series of tests includes, but not limited to heating part of the solid, adding water to the remaining solid, adding different reagents, different reagents like sodium hydroxide, ammonia solution, lead nitrate, barium, so those are the reagents. So when commenting on the observation, when writing the observation, the candidate should record all of the observations made and then avoid the following. So there are things here you must avoid. If you make that mistake, it then be sure you will not get anything. Uh, when uh, you are provided with a solid K and then you are asked to scoop part of it, heat that solid using a dry test tube, then test the gases produced. And then a student sees some water formed on the cooler parts of the test tube. And then a student writes, writes that water is given out. That one is very wrong. Um, or, or a student writes that uh, response like this, a colorless liquid condenses. That is very wrong. So the right way to write, where if that salt is hydrated, it will give it will give some water which will cool on the on the on the cooler part. So as a, you are not supposed to write water. Who told you this water? So the first way you should write that uh, a colorless liquid is formed at the cooler sides of the test tube or the pouring tube. Don't write water is formed or moisture is formed at the cooler parts of the test tube. Don't write that because you will get zero. Therefore, the correct way to respond to that is that a colorless liquid is formed at the cooler side parts of the test tube or the pouring tube, whichever you are using. A colorless liquid condenses on the cooler sides of the pouring tube. That is wrong, right? A colorless liquid condenses. A, car a, car a liquid cannot condense. Yeah. What condenses is moisture or vapor. So the correct way, if we want to talk about condensing, a candidate should record a colorless liquid which is formed or a unimesema. Or the other way you can put it is a colorless vapor condenses on the cooler parts of the boiling tube. A colorless vapor condenses up But don't write a colorless liquid condenses out of water. No precipitate. You expect to form a white precipitate, you expect to form a yellow precipitate or a green precipitate depending on the reagents given. Like in Manafunzi Uandike, Ulikona expect a white precipitate. And then uandike tu no precipitate unapata zero. Kama uliko na expect a white precipitate and then the, there is no that white precipitate. That is the, re, the result is negative. What the correct way to put it is to write that no white precipitate. Whatever you expected to appear, if it is, doesn't appear, you say that white precipitate is not there. So you say no white precipitate. Don't just write a uh, preci no precipitate, you get zero. Uh, for example, when you are using barium nitrate, barium chloride, you expect a white precipitate. When you are using sodium sulfate, you expect a white precipitate. So, but when you are using potassium iodide, so long as you may only potassium iodide, then you expect a yellow precipitate. If that pre yellow precipitate doesn't form, what it means is that uh, there is no yellow precipitate. Don't just write no precipitate, you will get zero. Uh, no observation. The candidate should always have an expected observation. 
based on the reagents provided. Uh, if in case it is not positive, the result is not positive, the answers start with no, followed by the expected observation, as I explained in part 3 above. So I have explained that. If you expected a yellow precipitate, and that yellow precipitate did not form, then you write no yellow precipitate. No observable change, the same thing. Don't write no observable change, change. That one is wrong. No color, if there is a color change. Now, if you are hitting a green substance, or a white substance which will change to black. If you write the answer as the solid changes to black, you get a zero. Don't write that the solid changes to black. No. You must give us the original color and then the new color. So, so, so the candidate should always start with the original color, original color of the substance followed by the new color, e.g. green solid changes to black don't just write the solid changes to black you will get zero thank you very much i hope we are together there and supported color changes for example the students write the color changes from blue to white of what what was that that was changing sometimes if you are given a solid like copper to solve it just write that the solid copper 2 solvate, copper 2 solvate changes from blue to white. If you have a solution, a colorless solution in a test tube, and then you add lead or you add, uh, you add a reagent, and then the color changes. So, so you should say that the solution changes from green to brown or from colorless to a given color. Don't just write it, it it changes from white to whatever. No. Mention the if it was a solution, mention the solution, the color of the solution changes from this to that. There is no answer like a clear solution in practical. Don't write anything that the, the, the solution remains clear. The solution remains uh, clear. No. You will get zero. If it is clear, it means it is a colorless solution. It is colorless. So never write clear. And then avoid word answers. In the practical, we don't need so many answers. And so, so what don't show out of English in the practical. In observation, we just need the exact thing. If it is a white precipitate, just write a white precipitate. A green precipitate is formed. A simple start. If you are adding dropwise until in excess we simply need a white ppt is formed dropwise and then it dissolves in excess as simple as that now i want to go to expected response in inferences when writing the inferences we write it in two ways kuna mahali tunaandika words statements na kuna mahali hautaandika statement upate Kwa hivyo wakati kwa mfano umepewa hii salt and then ukaambiwa scoop part of some of the salt decay heat the solid and then test the gases produced. Kwa hivyo when you heat this solid you expect if this water salt is hydrated it will contain water of crystallization and it will form a colorless liquid at the cooler parts of the boiling tube or the test tube. So if that is the case if you are heating a salt it it forms a colorless liquid on the cooler parts of that pouring tube, then the inference, the correct inference should be hydrated salt present or uh, it should be uh, water of crystallization. It contains water of crystallization. I and your majib mawiri una expect when you are saying it a colorless liquid is formed at the cooler parts. Inference yake ni hydrated salt yiko sawa. Uh, the same time we may be test for the gas so you will be uh, you will be using a uh, wet litmus paper blue or red the same solid will work at the uh, your blue litmus paper for you the mouth of the so with this, with this solid we are heating 
umeweka the pro litmus paper and red litmus paper up kwa the mouth of the test tube you are testing for the gas that is going to be produced so if the blue litmus paper changes to red then the gas is acidic blue litmus paper changing to red kwa inference unaandika acidic gas present kwa hivyo hiyo inaruhusiwa kuandika in war in statement as well unaisandika kwa inference acidic gas present or hydrogen ions present sasa hiyo unaweza tumia h positive h that is present or correct if the gas produced changes the blue the red litmus paper to blue it means that the gas is basic so you can write kwa inference words as basic gas produced or ammonium ion present then you are told to the remaining salt or solid k add three about 10 centimeters of distilled water now we want to see whether the solid dissolves or it does not dissolve what would you write in the inference if the salt if the salt the solid dissolves you write the solid dissolves to form a colorless solution that is okay what would you write in the inference inference when i send a statement ama wandike in iron form so so the statement will be the solid k is soluble a soluble salt present that one is allowed a soluble salt present it is okay or because we know it formed a colorless solution what it means is that uh, the ion two ions copper two ions which are blue ion two is green copper two is blue uh, and le and ion ion three is is brown they are not there so you write these three ions and then you say absent they are not there if it forms a colorless solution if the solid decay does not dissolve in water then the observation the, the observation is that it does not dissolve in water then any inference is going to be uh, the salt is insoluble the solid is insoluble sometimes you will be given the ph the, the universal indicator and the ph chart so if you have you you check the solution you have against the ph and then you realize that the ph is between one and three then in the inference unandika strongly acidic ukipata ni four to six kwa inference unandika weakly acidic kama the ph is seven unandika a neutral neutral simple start if the ph is eight to ten you write weakly basic if it is 11 to to 11, 11 to 14 you write strongly uh, basic now when you are writing ions the candidate you must assure, ensure that the first letter of a chemical symbol must be capital the first letter must be capital the second letter must be a small letter and the third small letter should not touch the first letter isi kuzane iki kuzane unapata zero the ion wakita hapa tumiandika copper two ions hii ion two hapa lazima yandiku vizuri uzi yandike na maringo hakuna maringo hapa for you to get it to score the inference side these ions lazima yandikwe eh, you must print them unandika vizuri pira kuandika venye unandika nga notes so p must be capital and small b should be small and they should not touch the, sec, the first set ikiguza imagine umepotea na hata kama uko correct the charge should be correct e charge inatoka nga wapi the charge inatoka from the valence of that element aluminium ni valence 3 so ni positive 3 copper ni 2 positive 2 zinc ni 2 positive 2 like that chlorine ni, ni negative 1 so it should be negative one negative hiyo ni kitu kwa sababu wanafunzi wengi huwa wanapoteza marks kwa sababu hawaandiki hawazingati hizi instructions inapeana sasa ulikuwa unataka kuandika sulfate sawa sawa sulfate ions pre present ama sulfite ama carbonate for example kwa tunatumia lead nitrate lead nitrate would form a white precipitate meaning there is a sulfate a carbonate a chloride or, or a sulfite lakini mwanafunzi unaandika sulfite s ya kwanza inakuwa capital the second oxygen the second oxygen inakuwa small 
imagine unapoteza hiyo max unapata zero kwa hivyo lazima all the letters in a radical to be capitals lazima zote zikuwe in capitals ama ulikuwa kwa organic unataka kuniambia kwamba after adding acidified uh, orange potassium dichromate and a warm the color changes from orange to green implying that alcohol is pre present sasa wewe unatupada ya kuandika hii alcohol r dash o h capital unaandika hivi r dash small o h you get a good zero instead you could have go scored everything kwa hivyo hapa lazima everything in radicals ikuwe capitals is na hiyo hizo letters isiguse na nyingine na isikuwe mbali mbali tena lazima ikuwe karibu na isigusane another, another thing a student you should avoid is the contradictory of ions kwa mfano hapa add sodium hydroxide dropwise until in excess then the observation is a blue precipitate is formed which does not dissolve in excess excess definitely what we have there is copper 2 ions because copper 2 ions are the one that are blue in color alafu wewe unaonge unaandika copper 2 ions or zinc 2 ions present hiyo umeandika contradiction and this one will cancel the correct answer and you will get zero so zinc are contradicting the copper ions since they would have given a white precipitate because zinc inatengeneza white ppt na the correct answer is blue Therefore this one you will get zero. So kwa observation utapata one mark, kwa inference utapata zero. Lakini kama ungeweka zinc ungepata that one mark. The the students should write all the expected ions. You should write all the expected ions in the inference part unless a particular ion has been eliminated. If you for example you are adding sodium sulfate when you add sodium sulfate you expect three inferences kwa sababu ina form a white precipitate na nini na lead na calcium na barium kwa hivyo ukiandika moja kama lead moja unapata zero mark ukiandika mbili lead na calcium utapata hapa mark lakini ukiandika zote tatu unapata one mark full so you must be careful with that those that ions that you expect andika zote na usiandike zile ambazo haziko hiyo itakuwa contradicting and you will get also penalized i will stop here for today we will continue tomorrow share and subscribe thank you